So I'm Richard Lang and this is my friend Bill Garsai that I've known for many years. And Bill first came across seeing in the early 70s like I did. And uh, we're just going to chat about the experience of seeing and how we've reacted to it in different ways. Well, at least Bill is. <laughs> Hi. So where, where should we start, Bill? Just tell me about how your experience when you first came across seeing and, and some reactions to it. Seeing was very challenging to me. Um, Why? Because I, um, I've, I've felt the need to protect myself, I think, from, uh, I, I remember the sensation that it was, uh, that it was, um, that it was weird. Um, uh, this was once one had managed to extricate oneself from direct experience and one was back into the, uh, into the, the, the script. Well, say a little bit about what you mean there. I, I think it's, it's a very rare person, maybe m more people these days, but it, it, I think when we were young, it was a very rare person who had thought through the things that Douglas had thought through and was asking the question that he was asking. I really wasn't. I was, I think, vaguely looking to, to, be, to, to know about spirituality or to, to get some benefit from spirituality. I'd done meditation, a little bit of transcendental meditation and so on. But I had no, no notion that uh, anything as, as radical was, 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 gonna, was going to be asked of me. So I, when I went along to seeing, it was just in a vague, oh, well, he's a Buddhist or something. You know? he, he, Douglas was giving Douglas a workshop. was giving a lecture at a lecture. the university, yeah. And do you remember your first impressions then? What I remember from that lecture was that what um, attracted me was the fact that Douglas was available in a way that was really something I'd not come across before. He said at the end of the lecture, that if anyone's interested in this then, then my house is open and, and uh, you're welcome, give me a ring. And, that's not something you hear every day from a visiting lecturer mm. uh, uh, mm. at a university. It, mm. it really isn't. Uh, and that's all I can r really, I know that's true, that I, that I felt I was touched by that. But whether, whatever else sunk in, I don't know. Um, but I certainly know that when I went, I eventually, some months later, I think, went to, rang him up and went down with my girlfriend to stay for the weekend at, at one of his two houses. And I got it full strength that time. Um, and it was, it was briefly uh, one joyous, wonderful. I had a sensation, I remember, of having a, just having dropped a huge weight. And this lasted about 10 minutes. <laughs> but going along to see him uh, kind yeah. of reinvigorated the experience for you in a way, or, or it deepened your understanding, or...? I know that I got it that weekend. That was a whole weekend hmm. of doing experiments and and getting clear ab about what he was saying. I know. Look, I may well have got it the first time. I don't know. I just don't remember. Hmm. I remember being struck by his kindness and and uh, feeling that there was a there was an opportunity. But one one of the things that that I I find so often. I, I remember looking around the spiritual supermarket is that you're always on the outside looking in. There are people saying, we've got it, come here, we'll give you a little bit. Or if you try hard, you'll get some. And that feeling that you're, all, you're, you're always uh, in the cold somehow, that, that other people have got themselves in a nice fireplace, but, but you really haven't. And, and, and everyone else, really, that I've ever come across in, in, in the among the many, many, many things on offer, is really always saying to you, uh, hey, stranger, you can have it better than you've got it, but not actually, <laughs> man, you've got it. You've got it. You don't need us. So that was what your, the message you got from Douglas was. Is, is that what you're saying? You've got it, Bill. You, you, you're seeing who you really are, for, for sure. 
Yeah, that was one of the things. Yes, yes, I yes, I think that's incredibly important. That that right from the get go, with seeing it's you you, what did Douglas say is is embarrassingly obvious. Mm -hmm. It is. You can't you this bang. There's no. There's nothing here. I mean, you, you can't take your time over that. And you and Douglas was always really insistent that it's, you've got it full strength. There's nothing to be. There's nothing to be added. So, what happened next in your experience? Well, I would go back to Nottingham, where I was living, and and try and forget it. Really. <laughs> Did you succeed? For periods of time, yes. You'd get it back into routine, back into your perspectives, um, and and. The way, you know, Douglas, or seeing, or headlessness, has a particular way of talking, uh, developed a language of its own, and that changes. But, so, from that point of view, it, it, was, um, it was a little universe of discourse on its own, mm -hmm. and therefore odd. Um, you talk about headlessness, or having not having a head, or, and, and you fall into a, um, ways of speaking with other people who've, who've, who've shared the experience, which you both know what you're talking about, but if anyone else was eavesdropping, they'd go... Weirdo. Yeah, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not normal. So I... I so it sort um, of went off the boil for you. I think I fought it like anything. I oh. don't think it went off the boil, no. I think I went, what? No! Because it's a total... You know, all the stuff that... I, I mean, I had done quite a lot of work on on rejecting everything my parents had told me, very important when you're young, and uh, building up my own belief system. And, and, you know, I was getting onto the lower foothills of a, some sort of spiritual superiority there. And, and it blew it all out of bang, the water. You know, <laughs> you know this, is, this is irrelevant and unnecessary and, and uh, a, waste, a waste of time. And you, what you think you've achieved is, is actually is a paper castle it's done you've done nothing and of course there's good news with that but I was not ready to give up my achievement you know my selfhood right. that easily yeah yeah so what what happened well because seeing so obvious I mean you walk down the street it catches you out I mean, do you know this has not occurred to me before but I think I think it it, it is a very loving thing uh, and authentic, and and I guess my heart responded to that, and mm. and so although yes, uh, and Douglas always said, and we always say, you've got it. You can go where you like into um, outer space, and you've got it just as good. But to be at peace, to be at ease with people with no pretense, and and um, it's a wonderful thing. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yes, but it was very powerful. It wasn't. It wasn't something that the two sides of it. You know, yes, it was nurturing and 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 um, enjoyable, but it also it was it was extremely challenging. And for somebody who was caught up in in understanding a lot, I I was brought up to understand things, and um, so uh, seeing has a whole lot to say in that area, and it sets it all spinning, particularly that central. Um, thing of 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 progress, progressing, m making yourself into something, and it w we're taught that we should. You know, this is important, and that and that people who who think through their lives tend to set a lot of store by uh, by understanding. Understanding. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, has your resistance to seeing gone? Did it go quickly, or what, what? What happened? You've been seeing for forty years. I think for a couple of years, for a couple of years, um, I I managed to forget it for sort of three six months at a time, and then I'd go back, and and uh, and then for the next couple of years, I was very much on my own, and and it was it the the understanding side of it for me was just pouring through, having. Having been filtered through, I did philosophy at university, so I had a lot of um, training, intellection going mm. on, and and a, and, a, and knew a lot of perspectives, you know, um, the the basic philosophical positions, and all the the Greek philosophers and 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 subsequent philosophers who had 
had had things to say which were interpreted to me in certain ways and you suddenly understand it in a different way mm -hmm. so it was um a very rich time very yeah rich and isolating because uh -huh. thinking a lot is not good for you mm. uh, so i was um rattling about on the buses i was a bus conductor mm. in a very beautiful part of the world just bzzzed like this so what happened next i mean what was the next phase in a way well, the next, I guess that slowed down a bit. Every now and again, I would, I would d do a workshop either with Douglas or with you, maybe. Or so you were making friends as well as being isolated on your own in a part of the country where you weren't really sharing, seeing. Perhaps you were visiting Douglas and making, seeing friends, as it were. You were part of a community. Uh, I mm. was pretty semi-detached. Uh -huh. uh, uh, because you guys had all met each other yes. in, at, at a very quite, quite short period of time, hadn't you? Yes. And uh, I, was, I sort of arrived, I think, a couple of years later or mm. whatever. And I think there was, a, dis there was a, a sense that I was not part of that s social group in quite mm. as much as, as other people were, mm. I think. And also there was a spread, wasn't there? That was one of the... Looking back, one of the really interesting things about what was going on around Douglas in the 70s was that there were a, a, a almost random collection of mm. types and ages of people that would mm. fetch up there. From different parts of the world. From different parts of the world, very different um, perspectives on life and experiences. Yeah, it was, that was a fantastically valuable for me. I mean all the, 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 the people that fetched up there uh, who had some of them very developed views of their own mm. uh, fantastic mm. cross section of, of uh, interesting and, and uh, sometimes quite strange people yes yeah. so where are you at with seeing now there really isn't any not seeing I mean, I, I can't think where I, I can't think where the, the the distinction stops. I mean, even th there are seeing bits and not seeing bits, but but that's just one way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. I think Douglas told the truth, and I think you and I and anyone who cares to gets it. In a way, you just start swimming. You just start. It's like playing, isn't it? It a, is, yeah, isn't it? It is. At a certain point, it stops being, all right, got to do this. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> might as well do this. This is fun. Life is fun, really. That's the light, light, you know. I was very serious, very, very heavy, really. Uh, in, in, and I think a lot of intellectual people are. It sort of lightened you up. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Gosh, yeah. Yes. So, uh, and everywhere you look, I, I mean, seeing's generous like that. It isn't. It isn't seeing and not something else. It's, it's, it's just be edgeless, be natural. At a certain point, there isn't any seeing and not seeing, is there? It's just. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. and that's a gift. It's like you know, you haven't. De there's no identity there. It's just that stuff muddling along <laughs> and this not muddling along at all. And then, uh, and then, no, no, then silence. And then, you know, one says, one's, one's into the mystery. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bill. Oh, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure talking about this stuff. Yeah. yeah.